This movie is about interaction frames in sequence diagrams. From the sequence diagrams we've looked at so far, you may have had the thought that these diagrams aren't great for showing complex procedural logic, such as looping and conditional behavior. And in general, that's true. So UML2 introduced the concept of interaction frames to help show such behavior. Here's an example that should look pretty familiar. We have an actor who's a landlord who's using a web form to create and store apartment listings on a website. And when the landlord has done that, the web form sends create invoice message to the billing system. The way this is set up, it looks as though the landlord can only enter one listing at a time and that each listing gets a separate invoice. Obviously that doesn't make a lot of sense. So you can use interaction frames to show looping behavior. This is what an interaction frame looks like. You put a box around the appropriate part of the diagram and in the corner you label it with some operator. Now you'll sometimes see the idea behind interaction frames referred to as combined fragments. And that name makes sense because what you're doing is fragmenting the sequence diagram into different parts and combining those to show the larger sequence. Whichever term you use, interaction frames like this one mark off a segment of a sequence diagram and label that segment or fragment with an operator. And the operator, of course, is simply a word or an abbreviation that provides information about the fragment that's inside the frame. So let's apply an interaction frame to our sequence that shows creating an apartment listing. Here again we have the exact same diagram. We have the landlord who is an actor who is entering listing details. The web form creates and stores the apartment listing and also sends a message to the billing system to create an invoice. So we've drawn a frame, an interaction frame, around the part of the diagram that can loop. We have the operator loop up here and we have a guard condition here to show how long the looping behavior can continue. So while there are more listings, we can repeat this as many times as necessary and then move on to the next part of the sequence. So this interaction frame shows more complex behavior than you'll see in a simple sequence diagram. There are a number of different operators that you might want to use to break your sequence diagram into fragments and to create interaction frames for various segments of the diagram. The ALT operator stands for alternative multiple fragments and the ALT operator will be associated with the guard condition and of course the guard condition must be true for one of the fragments to execute. Loop, as we have just seen, the fragment may execute multiple times as indicated by a guard. So if the guard, as long as the guard condition is true, the fragment may execute multiple times. Neg shows an invalid interaction. Opt stands for optional and it shows that the fragment contained within the interaction frame is optional. It's sort of like alt, but it's helpful to think of opt as working like an if condition that has no else. That makes the fragment inside this frame optional. Pair means that fragments are run in parallel. You might think of this in terms of multi-threading. Ref can be very helpful in keeping your diagrams simple. It shows a reference to an interaction that's defined in another diagram. So if you want to keep your diagrams uncluttered, or if you want to draw attention to a particular part of the interaction, ref can be very helpful. It's also helpful for times when you have an interaction that is used in a lot of different use cases. Uh, for example, authenticate user. Instead of showing that each and every time, you can put in a reference in an interaction frame to refer the viewer to a diagram where the authenticate user interaction is shown in detail.
so that helps keep things uncluttered. Region. This indicates that the fragment is a critical region and only one thread can execute it at a time. And then there's SD. SD stands for Sequence Diagram and you can throw a box around your whole diagram and label it SD to show that this is the entire sequence if you want. It's not necessary, but it, it can be helpful. So that's up to you. So interaction frames let you show complex behaviors and let you refer to other diagrams that show a particular interaction in more detail. And they're very helpful at taking a simple sequence diagram and adding complexity to it.